If you ask the average Australian to name a great Australian invention, they're most likely to say Vegemite or the Hills Hoist. At a pinch, they might also mention the Victor Lawn Mower or the Stump Jump Plough. But we Aussies are a creative and innovative lot and have contributed a lot more to humanity than just gardening equipment. Here are five great Aussie inventions you might not have known about. In 1905, Australian engineer Anthony Mitchell patented a new type of bearing called a fluid film thrust bearing, or simply a Mitchell bearing. The Mitchell bearing had tilting pads lubricated with oil. As the load on the bearing varied, the pads would automatically pivot to the optimal angle for most efficient running. At the start of the 20th century, this bearing was revolutionary, pun intended. It could sustain enormous thrust loads with minimal wear and without overheating, while being much more efficient and only one-tenth the size of the bearings it replaced. Within a decade, they had found almost universal application in large pumps, generators and ships. There was some reluctance by the British to adopt Mitchell bearings in their warships, until they discovered that the German Navy were using Mitchell bearings in their World War I U-boats, which gave the U-boats a range and speed that surprised the Royal Navy, and made the U-boats a much more effective weapon. As well as being efficient, the low wear of Mitchell bearings means they need little maintenance and are very reliable. A Mitchell bearing installed at the Holtwood Hydroelectric Power Plant in Pennsylvania in 1912, supporting 165 tonnes of turbine and 40 tonnes of water pressure, is still in operation today. That bearing has been estimated to have a maintenance-free life of over a thousand years. Mitchell bearings for their strength, efficiency and reliability are still used on all large ships, power plants, pumps and turbines today. At the start of the 20th century, mining was a much more wasteful process than it is now. The extraction processes of the time meant that miners were only able to extract about 70% of lead and as little as 50% of silver from their ores. Even large amounts of gold wound up in useless tailings piles. At mine sites around the world, there were huge piles of waste material containing vast quantities of valuable metal that no one could extract. In 1901, Charles Potter, a brewer from Melbourne, after seeing how bubbles in beer lifted the beer sediments to the surface of the vat, realised the same process could be used to separate valuable minerals from crushed rock. After testing the process with a sample of ore, he patented the technique. Two years later, a plant using the flotation process to extract zinc was built in New South Wales. The flotation process has been refined and improved by many individuals and companies over the past century, and more than 99% of a metal can be extracted from its ore. Froth flotation has been described as one of the most significant advances in metallurgy in the last thousand years. I'll drink to that. In 1952, a group of chemists at the Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organisation, or CSIRO, led by Sir Alan Walsh, developed the Atomic Absorption Spectroscope, a device able to detect minute amounts of different elements in materials ranging from soil to blood to wine. The spectroscope revolutionised chemical analysis and is now used throughout the world in laboratories, hospitals and factories. Atomic absorption spectroscopy works by vaporising a small amount of the material to be studied and shining a light through the vapour. The atoms in the vapour absorb specific colours of the light, leaving a fingerprint of their presence. This gives a very accurate indication of what atoms are present and in what amounts. Apart from being an extremely valuable tool for analytical chemistry, the spectroscope kick-started Australia's scientific instrument industry, now worth more than a billion dollars annually. Another technology developed at CSIRO is used around the world every day, the polymer banknote. Plastic banknotes are much more difficult to forge and are able to easily incorporate security features such as clear windows, holograms, special inks and multi-layer designs. They last much longer than paper notes and so are cheaper to produce and have less of an impact on the environment. They last longer because they don't tear as easily and don't fall apart if they get wet. Tricks like this lost their novelty to Aussies decades ago. 
More than 20 countries, including Brunei, Thailand, Britain and Canada, now use Australian-developed polymer banknotes. Hearing aids improve the lives of millions of people every year, but they are essentially amplifiers, replaying the sounds they pick up at a higher volume, and so they can't help the profoundly deaf. Beginning in the late 1960s, Professor Graham Clark began research into cochlear implants, installing the first prototype in the ear of a deaf man in 1978. Cochlear implants bypass the most delicate and so often damaged parts of the ear by transmitting the sounds they pick up as electrical signals directly to the nerves in the patient's inner ear. Since 1978, many thousands of people around the world have benefited from the implant. Australian researchers continue to improve the device and develop new technologies for hearing loss. These five inventions are just the tip of the iceberg. Aussies invented super strong spun concrete pipes, tower cranes, the deceptively orange black box flight recorder, extended wear contact lenses, the pacemaker, and have made major contributions to IVF and ultrasound. The list goes on. I'll leave you with a bonus invention. Wi-Fi. Sort of. Where would we be without Wi-Fi? Probably not sitting on the couch watching this video right now. While Wi-Fi often tops the list of Syro's greatest inventions, Syro did not actually invent wireless LANs. What they invented was a way to make Wi-Fi faster, more robust and more reliable. The Wi-Fi signals being transmitted around your house bounce off walls, furniture, you and even the cat. Your Wi-Fi enabled devices hear a cacophony of echoes which garble the data being transmitted and those echoes are constantly changing as you and the cat move around the house. To prevent this, the data transmission rate would have to be slowed down so that your device can pick the signal out of the noise. Syro invented a way around this. Syro scientists drew on their expertise in radio astronomy, a field of research where weak signals have to be separated from all sorts of noise. By splitting the data transmission over a range of neighbouring frequencies and then using clever algorithms to quickly piece the information back together, Wi-Fi devices can transmit and receive much faster and more reliably. If you're watching this video using Wi-Fi, you have clever Aussie radio astronomers and engineers to thank for the convenience.